What is up guys, little dog dog here today. I'm bringing you the guide for the 2017 Halloween event in RuneScape 3. Now, better late than never, the day before Halloween, they have the event out. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to complete all the free-to-play ghost stories. Now, all these ghost stories are going to take place in free-to-play areas, so you don't need to go to any members areas yet. If you are a member, you can still do these, and then ghost stories 6 through 9, which is going to be part 2 of this video, are going to be... In, in the next video that I upload. So if you're looking for Ghost Stories 6 through 9, wait, um, look for part 2. It might not be out yet, but that's what you got to keep an eye out for. But we're going to get right into um, parts 1 through 5, or chapters 1 through 5, I guess you could say. And um, I'm going to show you where to start. And before I get into it, if this video helped you, remember to subscribe, leave a like, comment down below. I love all the support I've been getting lately, and I appreciate everything I get from you guys. Really, thank you so much. I just want to add also, if you're only looking for a specific ghost, I'm going to leave the timestamp for that ghost in the description down below. And for items you're going to need, you're going to want to bring a piece of food. Any food will work. You're going to need to feed this to a ghost as well as a bucket of water. You're going to go to the same ghost. And then you're going to need a ring of kinship. Now, you don't actually need the ring of kinship. It's just going to save you a lot of time if you have it and you can teleport right to Damonheim, which is where the second ghost is located. Now, um... It's going to be faster for you if you just leave all your equipment in your bank to start. That way you don't have to do it in Demonheim. But it's not going to be too much of a difference as there's a bank right there. So it doesn't really matter. To begin the event, uh, the fastest way to get there is going to be to home teleport to Drainer. And just go walk north from there and you're going to find Closure the Ghost standing there waiting to talk to you. So you're going to want to speak to Closure and he's going to tell you about the ghost stories of Gilinor. There's a series of ghosts that are located all around Gilinor that need your help with closure, they can't move on to the afterlife. So you're going to want to accept the quest when he gives it to you. And he's going to tell you where you can find the first ghost, and he's going to give you a grimoire that's going to keep track of the ghosts that you do help. He tells you that the first ghost that you want to help is in uh, Edgeville. So you're going to want to home teleport to Edgeville, and it is going to be just northeast of the lodestone. You're going to need the food and bucket of water here if you don't have it. And you're going to see a really bad jump cut as well because I didn't have it, and I just edited the part out where I ran to the bank. Once again, I want to apologize for all the jump cuts you're going to see in this video. That is not, not normal for me. So like I said, you're going to find the ghost directly northeast of the lodestone, right next to the wildy wall. You're going to want to talk to the ghost, and as long as you have the food in your inventory, it's going to ask to take the food. You're going to want to choose the first chat option when this comes up. Just yes, give him the food. And then after the ghost eats the food, it'll turn to ash, and they'll ask for water. Say yes to give the ghost the water, and that's all you got to do for this ghost. The ghost is going to move on, tell you about how she gave all that stuff to her kids and never gave that to her stuff herself. That's why she died. And you're going to be able to move on to ghost number two. You're going to get these pumpkins too. I'll explain those at the end. The second ghost is in Demonheim. Uh, so use your ring of kinship to get there if you brought it. If not, you can get there um, from Lumbridge. So teleport to Damonheim. And you're going to want to put all your stuff in the bank if you have it on you. The only thing you can bring is your grimoire and the ring of kinship. I do believe you need the ring of kinship for this part. So you're going to want to deposit everything else and talk to the ghost. Choose the first chat option, yes, to help them. And it's going to take you into an instance dungeoneering thing. Not exactly a dungeon. You can't go through any doors. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when you get in this room is pick everything off, pick everything up off the table in the middle. Just loot it all. And head over to the east side of the room, you're going to find a grimoire. If you try to drink the potion to open the door, it's always going to be one level higher than you, so not possible. You can't go anywhere. Any, everything happens in this room. So read the grimoire, and it's going to tell you all about how to get out using a primordial gate stone. Primordial gate stone can be made using cloth and ore, so there just so happens to be novite ore and some cloth in the room. So you're going to want to mine the novite ore. I mined four. I believe you only need three, but you know, I didn't know that. And then directly across the room, you're going to find the salve nettles. Now you need to pick four of these as well. You don't actually need to. It's three or two. I can't remember exactly. But pick them, and then you're going to take them over to the spinning wheel and spin those into cloth. 
when you do this, you're going to get a pop-up in your uh, little chat box where it says that you got blood on your ring of kinship. This is important for the end. So you're going to make those self-cloth and then go over to the furnace. Now, if you try to smelt in the furnace, it's going to say it's not hot enough. You just need to use an air rune with the furnace and it'll make it hot enough. So use an air rune from your inventory and then you can smelt the Novite ore. You really only need three of each at the most. And then you can make the Primordial Gate Stone. It's going to be the first one. And once you've done that, you're going to want to use the Primordial Gate Stone on your Ring of Kinship. I had to go read the Grimoire because I forgot what to do. I felt the jump cut was a little necessary right here. But yeah, use your Ring of Kinship on your uh, Primordial Gate Stone. You'll get a Bloodied Gate Stone. Then go use the Bloodied Gate Stone on the Group Gate Stone Portal. Once you've done this, that's going to complete the second ghost. He'll teleport you out of Daemonheim. And he'll disappear and move on to the other side. Now the third ghost, and definitely the hardest and most confusing, is going to be found in Eastern Varrock. Southeastern Varrock. So just home teleport to Varrock. And it is just north of the magic shop where you can you know, teleport to the rune essence mine and everything. This one is really confusing, and uh, you're going to see some more jump cuts here, just because this one took me probably 45 minutes to figure out, just because I, I was just I was just missing a step completely. And once the group of us that were all trying to work on it together figured it out, it was just a oh moment. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying right there? Yeah. So you're going to walk up to the ghost here, and right next to him, he's going to have some crates. Your character is going to take four candles out of the crate, and then you can read the Grimoire, which is just next to him on the other, on the northern side. Now, the Grimoire is going to tell you where to place each candle and uh, what it should look like. So the north stands cold, the light to the east is shunned, to the west, breath is choked, and to the south, the very essence of life is burned. These are little hints to what candle you need to make. And you're going to make these candles by using them on the dye cauldron. So click on the dye cauldron and dye your first undyed candle white. Now use that un or that dyed white candle and dye it blue, and this is going to form an ice blue candle. Now use another undyed candle on the cauldron and dye that candle black. Use another undyed candle on the cauldron and dye that candle black as well. And then we're going to dye one of those black candles um, white. This is going to make smoke gray. And finally, for the last candle, you're going to want to dye it red. Now, this was confusing because we didn't know we could dye a candle twice. Now, you're going to want to place the ice blue candle on the north side, the smoke gray candle on the west side, the shadow black candle on the east side, and the blood red candle on the south side. I'm sorry if that was fast. I was super excited when I figured it out, so I was going a little faster than I should have. Now, for the fourth ghost, you're going to want to head to Faldor. This is right by the Feldor Lodestone, so it's an easy teleport there. And it's actually a really easy little mini quest. Now the ghost is right outside the Feldor walls. Just speak to him. Click through the dialogue, and he's going to take you right into the bar. Well, he's going to walk to the bar. you got to follow him. When he gets there, he's going to tell you that he was killed by werewolves and that one of those werewolves is upstairs in the inn. He wants you to figure out who it is and accuse them. So once you've done talking to him, just climb up the staircase and start figuring out who it is. You can talk to the people who are upstairs. Um... There are a few people upstairs, you talk to them, and they you ask for their alibi, basically, where they were when somebody died, and you then accuse somebody. You can just brute force this to figure out who it is, right-click on them and select accuse, you'll just kill people, but the actual person is Daniel, so if you figure out his alibi, he says he was here alone, that's an awful alibi, right-click on him, select accuse, that boy a werewolf. 
he won't actually kill him. He'll just run away. And then you can head back down the staircase to go speak to the ghost. That's that. And now for the final ghost, you're wanna, gonna wanna go back to Varrock and brace yourself for some more jump cuts. So you can just home teleport to Varrock once again because this guy is right next to the lodestone. I just did these in order, guys. Sorry that you had to go back to Varrock right now. I couldn't just do it while you were there. I apologize. I was just following the quest log. Now this guy's just south of the lodestone. You're gonna wanna talk to him. You're not gonna get any dialogue, but he's gonna start to move. It's going to tell you he moves to the north, and he goes right outside the inn, just to the north. Speak to him when he's there again. Once again, he won't talk to you, but he's going to go east into the inn itself. You're going to want to go inside the inn and climb up the stairs. And you're going to see the ghost haunting a girl in the northwestern room. Go over to that room. You can try and speak to the ghost, try and speak to the girl. You won't get anywhere with that. So what you need to do is click on the mirror that's on the eastern side of the room. I believe you need to do this three or four times. Pose in the mirror. It's going to distract the ghost enough for the girl to run. When he turns towards you, your character will tell the girl to run. She'll go to the room um, just south of the room that you're currently in. And then the ghost is going to follow her there. Now what you want to do is go to the northeastern room. In that room there's going to be a wardrobe. Jump cut there. Now, I just left in me searching these bookcases because I did it. But there's going to be a wardrobe right there. Open the door. Open the wardrobe and put on something spooky. Just Choose the first chat option, yes. Go into the room to the south. Well, I guess it's to the west, to the west now, but it was to the south from the room you were in. Walk in front of the ghost and talk to him with your spooky outfit on. He's going to realize that he doesn't want to be that, and he'll move on to the other side. Now that's that for the chapters 1 through 5. These are all the free-to-play ghosts. You can head back to Closure now to get your reward, or if you're a member, you can continue with the other ghost stories. As I said earlier, if this helped, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment down below whether this helped or not. Let me know what I'm doing wrong if I suck. I really appreciate it, and I just want to say thanks for watching. Really, really thank you. Bye!